Today, I want to talk about how there will be no more bank bailouts. I want to explain how the bank term funding program has officially ended. I want to explain what this means for the banks, what that means for those hedge funds, and what that means for the AMC squeeze. So stay tuned and let's make some money. Also today, we've officially launched a $1,000 to $10,000 challenge in the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. If you want to join in to take your account from $1,000 to $10,000, you just need to join the group using the link in the description below. But let's dive straight in with the key information. So. Jack has tweeted saying breaking news. Wall Street and regional banks are scrambling for new funds as the Fed has just ended the emergency lending program. Now, obviously, this bank term funding program was aimed at keeping failing banks afloat during the banking collapse of March of 2023. But what's interesting about this program is that actually most of the borrowing didn't take place in March of 2023. Actually, it took place in December and January of 2024. You can see during March of 2023, during that banking crisis, these banks borrowed $80 billion. But that number steadily increased through 2023 up to $115 billion and then rocketed up to $170 billion through December and January. This goes to show banks have been struggling and are still struggling every single day. But obviously, that bank term funding program has now ended. But what does that actually mean for the banks? What does it mean for the hedge funds? And when will we see an impact? Well, Kristen has tweeted saying some banks already have bank term funding program loans due in the coming weeks. You can see this article here talks about the banks that first took the loans back in March of 2023. Banks like First Republic Bank, PacWest Bancorp, East West Bancorp, Glacier Bancorp and many others. Obviously, these banks took loans of 13 billion, 5 billion, 4.5 billion and so on and so forth. And obviously, we're nearing in on March of 2024, meaning these loans will soon be falling due. Obviously, these banks don't have the cash to repay the loans and will be struggling big time and will likely collapse. But you may say, hang on, Tom, how does the bank term funding program actually work? When do the rest of these banks have to pay back those loans? Are all of those loans falling due this week? Next week, the week after, have they already fallen due? What's going on? Well, you can see the bank term funding program allowed banks to take a loan of up to one year in length. Obviously, some banks took loans instantly back in March of 2023, and those loans will soon be falling due. But obviously, some of those banks will have taken loans in April, in May, in June, and obviously many of those banks will have also taken additional loans through December and November of 2023. December and November of 2023, and of course, January of 2024. So that means some of the loans will be falling due this month, some next month, but some not until December 2024, and the final ones not until January 2025. So likely we are going to see an instant impact happening over the next few weeks, but also further impacts happening throughout 2024 and into January 2025. I guess we're going to see more and more banks steadily drip feeding the ability to not repay those loans and of course collapsing. And that's why Jerome Powell is obviously saying there will indeed be more bank failures caused by the commercial real estate losses. Partially due to those commercial real estate losses, but also due to the lack of ability to borrow more money, aka no more bailouts. So we're going to see a steady drip feeding of more and more banks collapsing over the next few months due to the commercial real estate sector declining significantly and because there's no more bailouts allowed. Jerome Powell is still trying to suggest the commercial real estate crisis is only impacting smaller and medium sized banks, but not the big banks just yet. However, we also know that as more small and medium sized banks collapse, it will put more pressure onto those big banks and I think many could end up collapsing too. I also wanted to quickly touch on Green Trader who's tripled his account in one month in the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group, starting with just $600, now up to $1,847. He's currently on his fourth green day in a row and he had three green days back to back last week and he's looking to repeat even more green days this week as well. 
Today, he secured 30% on TCBP, again adding to that green streak and helping him to triple his account in just one month. Especially as Biotech Moves has highlighted, he said Biggums was 100% correct when Biggums said, when have you ever seen hedge funds bailing out banks? That shows just how close we are to banks and hedge funds imploding. This obviously references those hedge funds buying those synthetic risk transfers from the banks. These banks are so close to being margin called, they're trying to sell some of that risk and trying to sell some of those margin requirements off to different hedge funds. These banks obviously know that it would cause cascading contagion if they were to implode. Therefore, they're desperately trying to kick the can for just a few more weeks selling these synthetic risk transfers. This is obviously something that's never been done before in history, but is being done now to obviously bail out these banks without the money coming directly from the Fed. By these banks selling these synthetic risk transfers, they can buy themselves a few more weeks, maybe a few more months, but ultimately those liabilities still remain. These hedge funds have been trying to kick the can time after time after time, buying themselves weeks, months, and even a few years over the last three years. But importantly, those liabilities never disappeared. The can was just kicked. If anything, these liabilities have gotten significantly larger, just meaning that we'll see even more cascading contagion when they do collapse. Actually, this to me means that when AMC does squeeze, it's likely to squeeze to a higher price in 2024 than it would have done in 2021. This is because the shorts increased their positions, those liabilities at those hedge funds and at those banks have increased over the last few years. And therefore, when the squeeze happens, I think it will squeeze or be an even larger squeeze or will squeeze even harder. Basically what I'm saying there is small liabilities, small squeeze, big liabilities, big squeeze, even larger liabilities, even larger squeeze. Ariel has also tweeted about the death of brick and mortar banks and the complete paradigm shift. That's because Wells Fargo, Bank of America and PNC are among the US banks to close 222 branches in just two months this year. These banks, as I said previously, are desperately trying to cut costs left, right and center to kick the can and avoid collapse and bankruptcy for a few more weeks and a few more months. But of course, as I said earlier in this video, those liabilities don't disappear. They just buy themselves a smidge more time. And again, Kristen has tweeted about another one of those attempts to kick the can slightly further by increasing capital requirements or removing proposed rule changes. She's tweeted saying big banks have been telling politicians they don't like a proposed rule requiring them to hold more capital. US regulators in July proposed new rules for banks with at least $100 billion in total assets to hold more capital following the failures of Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank and First Republic Bank. But because these banks are so desperately close to already being margin called, those banks are now rejoicing as regulators have agreed to modify the capital plan. That's because these big banks use their paid off politicians to try and sway the SEC and to try and sway FINRA. But again, as with the theme of this video, that doesn't remove those liabilities, just buys them a smidge more time. And finally, Joshua Sky has tweeted about how AMC is the greatest entertainment company in the world and isn't going anywhere. The reason why, as you can see from this screenshot, over the last few years, revenue has grown year on year, profits have grown year on year, operating income is now positive, and a bit dart is also positive as well. On top of that, net debt has decreased meaningfully in 2023, food and beverage revenue is up, and admissions revenue is up alongside. AMC has quadrupled revenue since 2020 and has also quadrupled gross profits as well. This pretty much suggests an annual growth rate of near 100%. Not many industries, if any industries at all, can keep up with that kind of growth. As Josh said, that signals AMC isn't going anywhere, and therefore the people that shorted AMC are in the same position as those who shorted Amazon, Tesla, and Nvidia. 
Not only that, but AMC doesn't even need to increase for those shorters to go bankrupt. Because if Amazon, Tesla and Nvidia continue increasing, those short sellers will be liquidated from shorting companies like Nvidia, liquidating their entire portfolio. Therefore, the AMC squeeze could literally be caused by Nvidia continuing to increase in price and those shorts finally being forced to cover. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I've got a new video. Cheers.